Hello, in this lab we are going to be using a UV spectrometer or UV visible spectrometer. Uh, this one here is a Spectronic 200. Uh, it can emulate a lot of different, uh, different types of systems, but we're just going to use the Spec 200 uh, interface on this. So it's a pretty simple instrument though. Uh, the way it works, if we open up the compartment here, there is a light source down in here. I don't know if you can see that hitting my finger. Uh, that passes a light beam across here. You'll put your sample in there. Some of that light in the visible spectrum or the ultraviolet gets absorbed uh, and the detector on this side then detects which wavelengths of light are being absorbed. And so that's just an oversimplified version of how this particular instrument works. This one can actually then scan over a variety of different wavelengths uh, as, uh, as it scans. All right, so like I said, we're going to use this first set up here and so that's everything that you'll see me doing down here is just uh, is, is putting some stuff into the uh, into the sample compartment basically our samples are these little cuvettes this one's a little dirty but uh, and so those go right into this slot down here they just slide in there and then your light beam passes through the sample so that part's pretty straightforward you just want to make sure that there's no bubbles in there that the outer part of that is clean uh, and that it's positioned so the the clear lens portion of the uh, the cuvette is open uh, on, on either side. There's also a frosted side, uh, which uh, again doesn't work for this particular experiment. All right, and so let me zoom in a little bit here so you can see a little bit better what's going on on the screen. So there you go, you'll see the screen. So uh, right now, uh, if I hit enter, it'll take us to the live display. We want to actually do the scan function, and I've got it set to go between 400 and 750 nanometers, and you can cycle through all of these different things just by pushing the up and down arrow. So it's, a, a, again, a very simple instrument to use. All right, so we're ready now to, uh, to scan. So let's get into the scan uh, menu here. And so first thing I'm going to do is put in a blank. So this is just one of the, uh, the cuvettes here. Uh, and it just has water in it. So basically what this is going to do is zero the instrument so any light absorbed by the cuvette or the plastic in the cuvette or the water that's going to get subtracted out of the uh, the spectrum that we end up seeing. So I'll put that into that little compartment that I just showed you a moment ago and then we're just going to hit the z auto zero button there this one right here in the center and it just takes a, a few seconds there for it to zero. Once that's done uh, then we don't really need to re-zero it every single time we can then just put in our samples and uh, and scan. So in this part what we're doing is finding the wavelength of maximum absorbance for each of the samples. So let me take out my blank and the first sample we're going to test is this one right here. So this is a uh, I had it right in the first spot. Um, so right there is a, a sample. Basically, it's just colored water. Uh, we usually we used to use Kool-Aid, uh, but uh, I found that grows some stuff after a while. So we just use water with some food coloring in it, and uh, and it works very well from there. So we'll close the cover here, and we're ready to scan. So I'll hit the scan button there, and it should give us a, a nice little scan of our sample. There you go. You can see that now. And so what I'm going to do is we'll move this cursor, if you can see the, uh, the kind of black and yellow line there. We're going to move this over here, and then I'm going to scan across this section here. So you want to pay attention. What we're looking for is the wavelength, which is this number here, where the absorbance is the largest. All right. And so as I scan across here, we'll just go one or two at a time, and you can back the video up here if you need to. Again, what we're looking for is the wavelength that has that largest absorbance. All right, and it looks like it's starting to go back down again over here. So let me scan back this way. And so you can enter in then, again, that wavelength that has the maximum absorbance. So the biggest number here, we want to know what that wavelength is. This is the Greek letter lambda over here, uh, which is the symbol that we use for wavelength. And you can see it's dropping off there. All right, so that was our red sample. Let's go ahead and put in the blue, or we're going to do the green sample next. So here's the green sample. So you can see that there. So we'll put that in. And let's go ahead and we'll scan that one. You can see how different this spectrum looks from the red one. So there's our green. Uh, we got some stuff going on over here. I'm going to ignore that, but there is a little bit of a peak here. Typically, though, what we're looking for is the wavelength of maximum absorbance, so that's going to be this one over here. So let me dial it over to this side, and then we'll just kind of scan across there like we did before. Again, very simple to do. So again, we're trying to find that wavelength 
uh, that has the largest absorbance. That's where the most light at, uh, is being absorbed for that sample. All right, so there was the green one. We're all, all done there. We're going to do a yellow sample next. Yellow does some weird things. You'll see, but this has, a, again, a very different spectrum or absorbent spectrum. These are absorbent spectrums. And so nothing up here, just one big absorbance down at this end. So let's dial it down there. And again, we'll just kind of scan through. We're just going one nanometer at a time. I don't know why I just had this thought of the old painter guy, Bob Ross. Happy little nanometers. All right, and so there's your scan across that. So you can record that, again, wavelength with maximum absorbance for, that. again, that was a yellow sample there. We got one more we're going to try, and that's a blue sample. This is my favorite color right there. So we'll put the blue sample in, and it helps to make sure there's no bubbles in your samples. Those can cause some weird artifacts and, uh, and, uh, and affect the absorbances there. All right, and so there's the absorbance spectrum for blue. So again, we've got this big peak down on the right-hand side here. So let me bring it over to uh, into there, and then we'll just scan one nanometer at a time across there. You can see it drops off pretty quickly there. All right, so the reason we do this is we want to know where that biggest absorbance is. Uh, that's where this sample should be the most sensitive. And so we'll dial it in at that for the other parts of this experiment. We can also use that to help us identify if another sample has blue in it, we should see an absorbance right there. Even if it's mixed with other stuff, we're still going to see that absorbance from the blue color. Sometimes it could be masked with other things, but uh, that's, uh, that's what we want to see there for the blue in that case. All right, so that's a little bit about how the, uh, the spectrophotometer works. I will uh, 